Hello, and welcome back to The Goodness Margin, the place where we find margin for the good things in life, minimalism Q&A sessions. This is the home edition version. So on Instagram, I have asked if you guys have any questions, and these are five of the questions that I've received. If you want your question answered, drop it below or head over to Instagram and ask me. Question number one, how do you organize your clothes? Is it by season, color, or use? Well, I have a pretty large closet. I'm really, really grateful for that. This is the largest closet that I've ever had. However, when we first moved in, it was pretty full. And now I've actually removed an entire rod. And then rather than folding my sweaters, I now hang them and use a rod for that. So all of my clothes, every season, they're all in this closet. Due to minimalism, I have been able to really reduce the amount of clothes that I own. So they all fit in my closet. I do organize them by type. I have all of my skirts together. I have all of my tops together. Now, these are tops that some of them are more dressy. Some of them are maybe a little bit more for fall or summer, but I live in Georgia. Our weather, it does get really hot in the summer. It doesn't get super cold in the winter. And a lot of my pieces are pretty versatile. I can layer a sweater on it or not. And that way it works for whatever season. So I keep all of the tops together. I do have my sweaters where I fold them and then I hang them over a hanger. I have those together because I have room for that. And then I have my longer hanging pieces that are all together. Now in each section, I do hang them by Roy G. Biv. That is the rainbow. So I'm gonna start out with white and cream. Then I'm gonna go into my pinks, red. Then you're going into orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, and finally I end with gray and black. I do put brown things in with orange. I can easily see that I definitely gravitate towards certain colors. There's no red in my closet. I don't look it in red. Um, and there's a lot of like the blush, this color, green, and black. And so it's just very aesthetically pleasing when you walk in and everything is coordinated by color. So that's the way that I organize my closet. Question number two, how do I handle regretting something that I have discarded? This is definitely something that I imagine a lot of people worry about when they want to start a minimalism journey. They want to begin to reduce the things that are in their house, but they think, well, what if I need this later? The reality is you're probably not going to need it later. However, if you are really, really concerned when you're sorting stuff that I really might need this later, put it in a box, close it up, put it in your attic, your garage, somewhere completely out of the way and set a reminder on your phone in six months, check it again. You probably can't remember what's in the box. And I imagine that you haven't needed it. We have been minimalist for about two years. And recently my husband and I discovered that I think I got rid of a cake plate that I needed that had a topper with it, but it might have been broken. And that's why I got rid of it. I can't really remember, but honestly, that's the only thing that I can think of that. Oh, I really needed this. Something else to think about. If it's something that is a really cheap thing, it only costs a dollar or two, and you're not sure if you're going to need it again, or you think I might need this next year, I would go ahead and let it go. I am extremely frugal. We live on a very tight budget. We're debt free. So I'm not saying just go blow a bunch of money, get out, get rid of your stuff and then go buy a bunch of new things if you need them again. But sometimes we hold on to a lot of things for that. What if minimalism, I always say it's like a muscle and the more you do it, the easier it gets. Question three, what about kitchen appliances and serving trays? I feel like if I need them once or twice a year, then I need to keep them. The first place that I really did a deep purging, started my minimalism journey was in my kitchen. And I realized I had a ton of serving trays. I had a lot of entertainment pieces because we do that a lot. We have friends over, we have church events at our house, and I just love those things. I love cake plates. That's why I use them for decoration in my kitchen. They're decoration, and I use each of those for entertaining. So the first thing I want you to think about is choosing versatile pieces. It doesn't mean that they have to be boring, that everything has to be white. Um, I do like to mix white metals and wood a lot because I feel like those things, you can add um, colored napkins, you can add fresh flowers, you can make those things seasonal. I have this beautiful 
Thanksgiving tray. And the prettiest part of it was this like turkey with this blue coat on that was on the middle of the tray. The problem is, is I was excited to use it for Thanksgiving and you put food on it and it covers up that beautiful turkey. It really defeats the entire purpose. First, think about versatile things. What are some things that I can reuse over and over again? And I'm not really a big fan of having things that are only for special occasions. What is something that I can use for my family dinner for a Wednesday night? And what's something that I could also use for a dinner party or for Thanksgiving? I have this really pretty white platter that I use for all of those things. The next thing I want you to do is to envision the largest dinner party, Thanksgiving dinner, or you're doing a baby shower at your house, or you're having however many, the maximum amount of friends that you would have over. What is the largest dinner party? What is the largest thing you're going to have in your house? I have this um, island behind me. And then I have another surface over here that I'll usually use for desserts or something like that. Now, first of all, many times my friends are also going to bring something. So I'm not going to fill the entire space, but if I'm imagining this is the biggest thing I'm going to have, what can fit on this? What am I legitimately going to use? And then I pick my favorite pieces that I'm going to use and I let the rest of it go. I got rid of so much stuff. And I promise you, I haven't missed it because I'm still using my favorite things over and over again. Now, as far as small appliances, I don't have very many small appliances because I think that personally, you want to have things that'll do double duty. So for example, if you have a regular toaster and a toaster oven, do you need both of those? You can make that decision as to if you need all of those. How many coffee pots do we need? Those kinds of questions are good to ask yourself. I definitely recommend choosing appliances that are going to perform more than one task. Question number four is help with storing purses. Now, as you all know, because you follow me because I'm a minimalist, that's likely the reason you follow me. I don't have very many purses. Um, I have decided to go with quality over quantity. I used to choose less expensive purses and then they would get a tear in them or something would happen and it would seem like I was, you know, it wasn't quite nice enough to wear, so I would still hang on to it. But then I didn't really want to use it because there was something that wasn't so great about it. And so um, I only have a few, so I don't really have a way that I store them other than a hook in my closet because I only have a few. But if you, if purses are your thing and you want to keep a bunch of them, one really great way to store them is inside of each other. So if you have a really large purse, then you can put one that's a little bit smaller and go that direction. And that really helps you to keep those compact. If you have space in your closet, there are um, dividers that you can get where that you can store them while they'll stay upright. Another great way is how that I store um, I have a couple of smaller bags and I store them on a hook in my closet. But I definitely would recommend for you to take a good hard look at those and choose the ones that are your very favorite, the ones that are a good quality that you're going to use over and over again, and maybe try to part with a few of those purses if you're having trouble finding the space to store them. Okay. And question number five, which is the final question is how do I start this process? This is a question I get so often because people want to feel that freedom that minimalism brings, but yet they're a little bit afraid of the process. What do I do? I feel overwhelmed. Well, the first thing I would recommend is choose a space in your home that will make a big impact. I do not recommend starting in your basement or in your attic or in your storage room. That's not the place I would start. I started in my kitchen because I love opening my kitchen cabinets. I do that multiple times a day and seeing that things are neat and tidy because there's not much that's in there. That made an instant impact in my life. Another great place to start is your living room. We're in our living room very often. It's somewhere we can enjoy together as a family. And so that is a great place to start. So if you're starting in your kitchen, I would advise you just to pull everything out and really look at each item. I like to think of the six month rule. Have I used this in the last six months? If you haven't, it's extremely likely that you're not gonna use it and you can let it go. In your living room, many times we can get things that are a little bit cluttered on the surfaces. We have knickknacks or we have um, photos and things just slowly start to build up. I would advise you to take everything off of those surfaces and maybe don't be afraid to live with it naked for a little bit. Just let it be bare 
Let nothing be there. And you will begin to really enjoy the space, the visual clutter-free space that you are sitting down and realize there is a place to put your coffee cup on the side table because there's no longer a bunch of pictures and candles. And then choose some of your very favorite things. Maybe with each surface, just put one thing at a time and decide what the amount is that you want to keep on those surfaces. I love answering your questions. Thank you for asking them. If you have a question that I haven't answered in one of my Q&A videos, please drop it below. I would love to hear it and maybe it'll be on my next minimalism Q&A video. If you've enjoyed these videos, I would love for you to subscribe, hit the bell, and that way you'll be notified. I hope you have a great week and you're enjoying the margin that you're finding for your life.